What is going on, everybody? I'm Spencer Tillis. I'm Trayvon Miles. And this is the Delmarva Sports Insider. Coming up in just a bit in today's episode, a huge Hennel Open North showdown in boys hoops as second place Cape was playing host to the conference leading Dover Senators. We're going to have those highlights. That was a great game. And in honor of the cold, Decatur warmed up to a little chicken noodle soup at home. Highlights of their win also over Mardella. That would be the Dover game right there that we we're talking about. And then they're also going to go taking things over to the campus where the Route 13 rivalry game was going on. Take two, a bunch of great action going on. SU playing host to Wesley. Oh, a much. great one too that I know you got a little on. bit invested in. A little bit. But we're going to go ahead and start things off here with the high schools. And it's time to give credit where credit is due. Up in the time. Bayside North, time for me to eat a little crow. Time for a lot of people because somebody that nobody had coming in, nobody mm -hmm. had crowned, no one had even on their radar was making a statement this week. And that was Cambridge looking to wrap up the conference titles. They hit the road on Thursday to take on Kent County. And a quick start for the road team. Dre Green goes to the step back here, drills the three ball, and then Green gets the nice pass from Emery Wongus. And he lays it up and in for two more of his game high 27. But back comes Kent. Shamar Turner can't convert on the reverse lane, but Manny Camper is there to tip it back up and in. 26 for the junior on the night. A few plays after that, Marquand Green on the drive. He kicks it over to Turner. Turner not going to miss that one right there. Connects from distance. Made it a five point ball game, but Cambridge able to close this thing out in the fourth right here. Smooth Niall Thompson to the rack right there. High off the glass, gets the drop in for two. And then they go ahead and put this thing away. Wongus in transition for two more points. The senior had 12. The Vikings win their 14th straight ball game. They clinched their first conference title in eight years. How about that? 72 to 55, the final. And like I said, time for us to eat. Well, at least for me, I'll, I'll speak for myself, <laughs> to eat a little bit of crow right now. Vic Burns, a tip of the cat, my man. What a job yes, he has done yes. with that team, that program. In two short years, he's kind of put them back on the map after, you know, like you said, it's been eight years since they've, you know, made a run at this thing. And it wasn't that close this year. I mean, it felt <laughs> close for a while. And then out of nowhere, yeah. it just seemed like they, they just, just started beating everybody right. that was running their heels. And they put this thing away early on. Now they can kind of coast as they get ready for the playoffs. And, you know, it's well-deserved. That's right. And we were talking about who on Cambridge would make first team, right? And I think Dre showed a little bit. Dre Green mm -hmm. showed a little. He might be that first teamer for Cambridge uh, in the near future. I really like Niall Thompson's mm -hmm. game. I told him he's the glue to that team. Yeah. If you watch that team, he's the glue to stick. So we and you also, can't underestimate what Richardson does for him, too. Oh, well, he shoot the ball. Yeah, he Anytime you can, shoot, you can shoot the ball, you're a good player, good asset. Got a clash in Delaware as well. Dover with a tight grip on the Henlopen open north, up against Cape, who had an outside shot at the division and a little home cook. And the centers came out attacking the glass in this one. Trayvon Moore can't connect. Jordan Allen there to collect. Another game in double figures for Allen. He had 10. Later, his partner in crime, Terrence Woodland. You think teams will box this kid out, Spencer, after what he did Too to big. Smyrna. The Vikings proposing a comeback. Drew Mulcahy all the way to the cup for the lay-in. A few plays later, it is the big sophomore, Big Ian Robertson, dropping one in for deep. Cape trail by just three, entering the fourth quarter. But Dover went on a run in the final eight minutes. 14 to five, defense locked down, and then the offense got high. Actually went it by this dunk here by Steven Justice. Dover all but closes the door on the north. They top Cape 47 to 35. An impressive win by Dover. Any, anywhere in the north is hard to go and actually get a win. But for the, especially with those fan sections going on, but I'm kind of a little bit in shock right now of the way Kate played that game. 35 points at home. You don't really think it's mm -hmm. Dover as a, as a great defensive team. You know, they don't yep. strike you as a great defensive team. For Cape to only come out and put 35 points up, that shocked me a little bit. But, but Dover, they can do it any type of way. They got Woodland. They got Allen, they got uh, Mikey Douglas, and they and you know they, anybody can kill all you of them point. taller than me. I mean, they got a <laughs> lot of height on them. And, that, and you're right. I mean, Dover's kind of a team. Uh, they're gonna give up some points. They're gonna you know relax a little bit on defense every yeah. now and then. Yeah. But when you have the scores they have, it yep. almost doesn't matter. Sometimes they kind of get complacent. Absolutely. Right. But they really put the clamps down. But Ian Robertson. As far as sophomore or underclassmen oh, go, oh my goodness. Yeah, he is the truth. Yeah. He's going to be real good yeah, by the time yeah. he's a senior. Two more years. Well, speaking of a team that's got a lot of seniors, Pocomoke was looking to remain tied for the lead here in the Bayside South. They had a tough matchup taking on Parkside, yep. who was only one game behind him coming in. The Rams came out firing. Raekwon Williams, the putback, steps back beyond the three and then strokes the long ball, and then he gets three points the old-fashioned way. Team high 18 for the junior. Parkside was up early on, but back comes the home team. The floater off the mark right here, but Tyler Nixon can't get it go. And then Jarek Johnson's there for the tip in. A couple plays after that, Nixon pulls up from the elbow and knocks it in. 
Parkside firing right back just before the end of the buzzer. Xavier Waters, my man, dialing it up from distance right there from the 7-11 down the block. Rams up four at the break, third quarter, and the Warriors fight back. The tough post move by like Curtis Whitney. It was tied up in the fourth, and then Nixon took over the and one here on the baseline. Then he's going to get to the rim for two more. He had a game high 20. The Warriors get the win 67 to 53, the final. And I I actually looked at the Pokemon Warriors for a while and I felt like they had peaked a little early and it seemed like they kind of dipped a little bit. I don't I don't see it anymore. I still yeah. look at them and they're getting so much contributions from so many other people. Johnson's really starting to find like his groove. Nixon has been able to develop more as a scorer recently as well. He, he's always been that whatever they kind of need right now, right? I mean, he runs the offense. He finds the guys that they need to do. Mm -hmm. Now, quietly, they have an opportunity. And it looks like to go 19-1 if they can get by Snow Hill, who's obviously red hot and dangerous right now. But the thing is, even at that, they might only be tied for Bayside South. Tough year to play in the South. Exactly right, man. And, you, and when you think about everything that Pokemon has accomplished this season up until now, you got to uh, take in Cambridge into consideration. Mm. The 1A is going to be crazy come playoff time here, all right? Hold on to that. We got another stop to make in Maryland. We take our talents to Somerset County. On Thursday, the Washington Jaguars, another 1A team. Mm -hmm. They're trying to move up in the Bayside South standings. Hosting Snow Hill, another 1A team. Snow Hill hey. made themselves comfortable <laughs> in the jungle. Amir Fisher looking to do his work for the hilltop. Gets the steal, locks it up, and goes all the way. Got time to get the lay-in. Not done. Knocks down a three, and then Fisher gets into the lane for three to Hardway. 28 big points for Amir this game. Washington hanging tough. Jordan Sterling missed the layup. Toughest kid in the base out here. Tyler Polson with the and one. Snow Hill. Not having any of that comeback, though. Josh Coleman, nice look inside to Dakai Wise for two. Then Wise, uh, he played a little defense as well. Still in two more. He had 24. Mm. Snow Hill takes the win, 74 to 67. Boy, Spencer, that duel is tough. Fisher with yeah. 28 and Wise with 24. We're starting to really see something from this team. They're having their best season since 2010. And I'm not saying that they can go on and make a state championship run, you know what I mean? But I'm saying they really can make some noise come uh, come this playoff time. Like we said, the 1A, you never really know what can happen with Pokemon and Cambridge and everything else going on there. Yeah, the young Eagles are really starting to figure it out. They're adapting to their roles. They're accepting it. And you got a guy like Amani Allen come off the bench now. I mean, everybody's doing what they need to do right now, and it is fun to watch. They'll have an opportunity to at least make it competitive yeah, with Pokemon. Yeah. I still think the Warriors got that one, but uh, yeah. their year's coming because that team ain't going anywhere. They're, They're young, young right yeah, now. I agree. We'll stick with a little basketball. Decatur, another team kind of leading the way here in the South, looking to remain that way as they welcomed Mardella into town. And Torrey Brittenham was doing his thing. He gets the uh, helper right here to Keon Ely for the score. Then those two hook up one more time as he gets a little drop-off pass. And then he started feeding the big fella, Kaveya Luma underneath the nice little post move for two points. And then one more time, a huge lead for them going into the third. The Warriors trying to make a small run in the fourth. Tyler McCoy gets it on the rotation, pulls up from distance for three of his game high 24. But this thing was all Decatur. I mean, Mardell didn't even score in the third quarter. Aluma gets to the kick out to Kayvon Voiles, the corner three ball. The Seahawks get the win 76 to 40, the final. North Dorchester hosting North Carolina. Jameer Emery with a triple decker behind the back over to Daquan Johnson for ah. three. North Carolina with some tricky moves as well. Joey <laughs> Adams finding some space, knocks down the Jay Bulldogs with a lead. North Dorchester responds. Ole defense here by Caroline Emery. Emery goes right by his man for two more, but the dogs would put this thing away. Tay Potts in transition. Easy deuce. Dogs go on to win this one big, 79 to 42. And Colonel Richardson taking on Queen Anne's on Thursday. Early on that one, the Lions on the attack here. Charles Heinsohn finds Cassius Warren. He dials up the long one. Back comes the home team. A.J. Palmer finds Zach Hall. The big fella can shoot the pill. Bottoms up on the corner triple. Queen Anne's firing right back. Nick Dunkerley pulls up, and he hits one from distance. Just everybody connected on threes, and why not? CR's turn. A nice drive by Sean Bowens. Gets the rack for two plus. The foul team high 20. But the Lions just kept on coming. Mikey Monroe finds Heinsohn for three more of his game high 26. Queen Anne's gets the win, 77 to 44, the final. What a year it's been for Queen Anne's. You know, we Another thought team. they yeah. were going to win the Bayside North, and it looks like Cambridge just came back almost in the middle of the second half of the season and, and took it right from them. Yeah, it was uh, disappointing. Uh, definitely, but there's still another opportunity. There's some chances seven. for them in the two A. All right, that's it for round one. Plenty more action to go. The Wizard is back to give you his play power rankings. Spencer's here. We're going to battle it out the top five next.
Hi, I'm Sean Phillips, Laurel Boys varsity basketball coach. You're watching Delmarva Sports Insider.